Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video we are going to discuss Geeks or Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is all unique permutations of an array and it is a medium level problem. So basically we have been given an array of integers and we have to find all of its permutations. The only condition is that the permutations should be unique. So I will tell you what this means in a while and the final array, the array of those permutations should be in sorted order. These are the two conditions that we have. right? Now let us see how we can solve this problem. But before that, let us discuss what do we mean by unique permutations. So if there are two ones in this particular array, so this is 1a, 1b let us say. So when we try to calculate the permutations, this is one permutation and this is another permutation. right? These are actually considered to be different permutations. But our question wants that we want only unique of them because actually when you see it or when you read it, you will only read 1, 1, 2. Right. You will only read 1, 1, 2 in both of them. This is 1b and 1a and 1a is here and 1b is here in this one. But still both of them are 1, 1, 2. That is why we want the unique permutations. So this problem can be easily solved with the, a simple backtracking approach. So backtracking is basically nothing. You just try on all the values. It is very similar to DP. The only difference is we do not try to save anything here. We just perform recursion and uh, possible uh, explore all the possible approaches. Now, uh, when we talk about backtracking, we need to know a state where we can stop. So, let us say the array size is n. So, let us say this is our array and this is of size n, right. When I have considered all elements and when I have reached this particular state or this particular position n, considering this is 0 based indexing, 0, 1 and so on. So, this position will be n when I have exhausted all the elements, right. So, once I have exhausted all the elements, that means I have, I must have formed some or the other permutation. Right. So, what I can do is I can take that permutation and insert it into my answer vector. Right. So, this uh, for now this might seem like I am uh, saying random things, but once we build the code, these things will be much more clear to you. I am just trying to give you a high level idea of how this thing is going to work. Right. So, first of all, we have just discussed the base case. When we reach the position n, we must have a uh, current permutations array and we must push it into the answer vector. Right. So, now what happens in any other general case, right. So, let us say, let me just write it as well. So, I am just going to write it. Let us say we have a helper function. The helper function does not return anything. So, let us say it is void. I will also have a position p, right, which I just discussed. Now, if p is equal to equal to n, what I am going to do is, I am going to push back, let us say I have a current vector. So, let us say, we are going to assume we have current vector which has my current permutation, right. So, since I have my current permutation, I can just push it back to my answer vector, right. So, we have done this part. Now, what we do, we can just return from here, right. Now, let us see what we have to do in other cases. So, the very first thing that comes to your mind should be that once I have taken that element, we do not need to take it again, right. This is my idea. So, I also need to maintain some kind of a vector, let us say a boolean vector or even an integer vector. We need a vector which saves with all the elements that have been taken, right. So, let us say I am going to use a taken vector. Right. So, you see I am just trying to uh, first of all realize the base case and then try to figure out what are my requirements and according to the requirements I am going to define these input vectors. Right. Once I have defined those input vectors, I am going to use them in my code. Right. So, at any place, at any place if I have n numbers, right, I have this original array and I have n numbers in between. So, 1 is here, 1 is here, 1 is here, 1 is here. Right. So, I can take any one of them. Right. At my current position, I do not have any restriction. I can take any one of them. Right. So, what I will essentially try to do is, I will try to go through all the n positions. So, I will go through all the n positions. Right. And I will just check whether this position has been taken or not. Right. So, if not taken i, this position i, I am going to take it. 
So where does this taken vector come from? I have already explained that we are going to use this to store which are all the elements that have been taken and more precisely which are the positions of the elements that have been taken, right. So if this position is not taken, I am just going to take it, taken of i is equal to 1, I just mark it and since I have my current position in my current vector, so I am just going to push this current position in my current vector and then call helper of p plus 1, right. So you see how simple this thing is. What I am doing is, I am doing nothing, I am just finding out what are my requirements and then according to those requirements, I am just uh, doing some operations, right. And these operations are not very difficult as well. So when I came here, I wanted to know what are all the elements that are already taken. Because all the elements that I have taken, I cannot take them again, right. This was my first thing. Now the second thing is, I can take any elements from the n elements. So I just make a simple for loop going through all the element, n elements. If this element has not been taken, I mark it as taken, I push it back to my current vector and then I call my helper of I, p plus 1, right. Now since it is backtracking, I would want to reverse this particular operation, right. I want to reverse this particular operation so that I can take this element some time later on, right. So what will basically happen is, I will just current dot pop back, pop the last element from here and then taken of i is equal to 1, right. So what is actually happening is, let me just draw an array. So let us say you have an array like this. So now we have these elements. Let us say what you did was, you decided to take for the current p, you decided to take this particular element and then you move forward and then you explode some cases. But now you came back here and then you decided, okay, I do not want to take this element, I want to take this element. So before taking this element, you would want to mark this particular element as not taken. So that is exactly what I am doing here. I am popping it back from the vector and uh, take marking this element as not taken. So this should be actually 0 here. So this should be 0, right. So this is exactly what backtracking is. Taking one element, exploring all the things and then coming back and then taking another element, right. So now we have figured this much out and this should work, this code will work if we do not want to deal only with unique permutations. Now you will see what will happen is, let us say a 1 is here and then let us say a 3 is here and then 1 is here. So you will try to take this particular element at the current position, this one, then you move on and went ahead further, right. And then you came back at some point, you try to take the next element that is 3, that is also fine. And then you explored further and then came back here. Now you will try to take this particular element 1. Now why is this wrong? For the same p, you took this particular one and this particular one as well and then you explore all the cases. So the same permutation where this particular position p has one at, at this particular place will be created, right. So it will be created twice and that is not what we want. So what we can do is, we can maintain a local current taken vector. So vector bool, let us say current taken, right. Since all the values in the array are only up to 10, this is given in the constraint. So if I show you, so you see it is only from 1 to 10, right. So I can make it as of size 11 and then pass 0. So all the values are 0. So what is, what I am trying to do here is, I am going to save which are all the numbers that I have tried to take in at this particular position. So I mark current taken of v of i as 1, right. And I am not going to change this, right. So you see, I am marking this particular taken as 0 later on, but I am not going to do the same for this particular current taken. Why is this so? Because if I have taken a current element here, then I should know for the further elements that I do not want to take this particular element again, right. So I am not going to unmark this particular current taken. And before getting into this for loop, I have to confirm two things now, whether this uh, position is not taken and not current taken, this particular element i, v of i, right. So now I have to confirm these two things together. Only then I will be able to get into this for loop. So you see how we are trying to build our solution by going on through the requirements one by one, right. So first of all I realized this should be a backtracking solution and we should try exploring all the possible paths for, cons or for constructing a permutation. Now for that thing, I know that we must need a base case somehow. So what I did was I created a base case first with a, when p is equal to n, that means we have exhausted all the elements. We should push back the current permutation into our answer vector and then just return. Right. Now, I knew that uh, we must also maintain some kind of a taken vector, so we do not take the same element twice. So you see that this current taken and this taken are dealing with actually two different things. When I mean this particular taken, 
this actually takes care of the indexes that this particular index has been taken or not, this particular index has been taken or not, or this particular index has been taken or not, right. So that means if this index has been taken, this should not be available to take for any other positions, right. So that is why I created a taken vector. Now, once I've created a taken vector, I just uh, performed simple uh, uh, backtracking. What I did was I marked my current element as taken. First of all, I will have to check whether this element is not taken or not. If it is not taken, I'll mark it as taken, push back the current element into my current vector and then call helper of p plus 1. And if I, when I come back from my backtracking, I just pop back from the back and mark this current element as not taken. Then I realize that, okay, this will deal with the positions, but I've still not taken care of the elements itself. The same position p can have one multiple times and that is not exactly what I want. So what I did was I created a Boolean vector current taken which will take which will save what are all the elements that I have taken at the current position p right. So whenever I try to take an element I mark it as 1 or 2 that means this element has been taken before. So what will what it will do is if I have taken 1 here then it will not allow me to take 1 here again right at the same position. So for that, I have to include this particular condition as well. So before getting into this part, now I check two conditions. The first one is if the current index i is, has not been taken and the current uh, value v of i has not been taken as well. If both of them are true, only then I get to this particular part. So you see, this is how we can maintain the uniqueness. And now at the end, what you can try to do is, you can simply, uh, when you get your answer vector, since they want the answer vector to be in sorted order, you can just simply try to do unsort so what you'll do is, I believe I just, uh, so you, at the end you're just going to sort answer.begin and answer.end. So basically this will help you to sort the permutations. So you can do this part at the end or you could have also done it in the beginning with the array, original array, V. Because if all the elements are sorted, the permutations will always be formed in the increasing order only, right. You can do it there with the original array or you can do it with the answer vector at the end, right. It is totally up to you. Now at the end, what you can try to do is, uh, you can just return your answer vector. Now this is my final code. This is exactly the same which I have just explained here. I did not explain it here because I wanted to show you how these, uh, this particular code has been constructed. We think of the requirements one by one and uh, we try to write the code. But still, let me just quickly go through this particular code. I have created a double dimensional vector called answer. I have created two vectors. One is current and one is taken. This is going to denote the current permutation and this is going to denote what are all the indexes that I have taken. Now I call helper of position of 0, sort the answer vector and then just return it. Inside the helper function if p is equal to n, I just push back this current vector into my answer vector then just return. Now, I just uh, create a current taken vector of size 11. Why specifically size 11? Again, I'm telling you that the values of array of i is only up to 10. That is why I have taken size 11, right? Now, I'm just going through all the elements. If this current index has not been taken and this current L array element has not been taken, I just mark it as taken in both of the vectors and current dot pushback, uh, current element. I call my helper function of p of p plus 1. Then I pop back the current element and mark taken of i as 0. Right, again, you do not have to mark this particular array element as uh, 0, not taken, because then you will again take the same element, right. So, let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct. So, you see this passes all test cases and this solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So, that is it for today. Till the next video drop, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.